Hello. In this video, I'm going to do a tutorial on how to set up your audio inputs and outputs and also set up the control room in QBS. Control room is only a feature in QBS Pro as far as I'm aware, but the other stuff should apply to all versions of QBS. Things have changed slightly. This used to be the devices menu. Now it's called the studio menu. First thing you need to do is click on that, go to studio setup, and then under audio system, you want to select your audio interface drivers. Without that, you're not going to get any inputs or outputs. Then if you need to control the latency for real time processing through like native plugins with the universal audio stuff, it's not so much of an issue because you can use their console application for low latency. But if you need to adjust the latency, the lower the sample buffer, the lower the latency but also the lower the sample buffer, the higher the CPU usage. So when you're recording, MIDI 1, 2, it's fine. Uh, MIDI only uses the output latency, so it's 1.825 milliseconds. Audio is the combined. So 120, it's actually probably fine for audio as well. That's not, not too bad at all. The more that you're mixing and the more processing that you're going to add, you're going to want to increase the buffer size. So usually when I mix it, I'm at 1024. When I'm tracking, I track as low as possible. So that's for controlling your buffer settings for latency. And once you've got your, your audio output driver selected, click OK. Go back to the studio menu. Click on audio connections. Then what you're going to want to do is Right click here, add bus. And then you'll add as many buses as you want. So say your audio interface, like an Apollo twin has two inputs. So you have two mic inputs and then you've got a high Z input for guitar. So high Z input is on channel one, mic line input is channel two. You can set that up as two mono inputs and then you can also set up a stereo input which uses both of them. And then if you've got an ADAT interface, you can actually expand that out by another eight so you can have 10 total and you can create those as mono or stereo pairs whatever you want to do so that is the basics of how to set up your inputs once those inputs are set up and you record enable them when you hit arm there you go you can see channel one is coming through there which is what i'm monitoring through you're probably hearing the double of the mic so once you confirm that you're getting a signal coming in, you're set up. That's no problem. And here, when you select an audio track, this little drop down area here is where you select your mono in, mono in two, or your stereo in, depending on what source you want to record. So back to audio connections, you want to go to your outputs. And if you're using a basic version of QBS that isn't pro, you'll want to select your monitor left, monitor right. And that should be you set up, good to go. Now, for the control room, which I have set up here, you can actually set it up as a separate output for your monitor speakers, and then another separate output for your headphones. What this means is that you can apply different software to each one. So for the main output, I have tonal balance, which allows me to check the tonal balance of the project that I'm working on in real time. And then I have the speaker calibration software, which I've got disabled at the minute because I don't want it being recorded onto the video because it'll make it sound weird for everybody. Then on the headphones, which I'm monitoring through at the minute, I'm actually using just regular headphones. So I've got Sonarworks and I'm calibrating a pair of Sennheiser HD 599s, just bringing that mid up, leaving the bass, leaving the, the high end alone. And then I have Can Opener Studio, which is giving me a little bit of cross talk to give the headphones a bit more of a speaker like sound. So you're not hearing that. I'm hearing that though. And then I've got metric AB, which allows me to do comparisons between tracks that I'm working on. So at the minute I was doing a radio friendly version of a track and I was comparing it to the original version just to make sure that it was all the same. A couple of little differences in it, apart from the being censored. So those are all coming through just on the headphones. These are all coming through on the speakers. So I've got my speaker calibration set up in here. And then 
through the audio connections, I'll show you how to set that up. So basically, you'll enable the control room and then monitor left, right. We'll send them to here. This is where you'll control your monitor level. And then on my particular interface, it's headphone left and right. But on some interfaces, it'll be channel three and channel four. And that'll be your what you'll set your headphones to. And doing that, you've got your control room set up. You've got inserts that you can put effects onto and monitoring effects and you know spectrum analyzers, all kinds of stuff. You've got your main tab and your insert tab. And then your tabs up here for VST instruments, media, control room, metering. So normally I just leave it on control room unless I'm opening up the instrument and then I switch to the instrument tab. And I just control my overall output from here, overall output of the headphones from here. And yeah, basically that is all you need to know about the control room and inputs and outputs to get you going. Hopefully people find that helpful. Cheers.